So was I was I supposed to pick the the Reddit question this week, or was that you? I thought we were talking about Bethesda. Oh, that's right. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess we could talk about more game announcements today. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We can just, definitely do that. Yeah. I'm I'm sure we won't find find trouble talking about some things. Yeah. It's we're a probably lot. just gonna be ranting about Skyrim anyways. So. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 That's true. <laughs> and there's also the new near announcement today. So. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yep. there's there's a lot of things well. we could talk about today. Gaming related stuff, basically. Mm-hmm. Well, okay then. Welcome to this week. Oh man. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I started recording because I was gonna wait to, uh, to ask that question to start recording. Um, so yeah, welcome to this week's episode of Pause Menu Podcast. I'm your host Etoy, and I'm joined today by Ali Braha. I have stuff in my mouth. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, he's eating right now. Uh, so today we got we're gonna talk about a bunch of game announcements basically that came out recently. A lot of lot of news concerning the gaming world last. I think last episode we talked about the PlayStation Five, and yeah, right. That's that's all we talked yeah, about. Yeah, that was basically it. We, yeah, we talked for a long time. Like you guys didn't see, but we had like two hours of footage of us talking. I know that's that that was probably the, the longest podcast that we have ever recorded, and we even had to cut out like some parts of it because it was it was way too long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just it was just the main topic. I think right. It was just that's all it. Yeah, we didn't we didn't even have an icebreaker question. It was just like let's talk about this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the gameplay it was, that you're it seeing, was a big day. Yeah, it was. It was. The gameplay that you're seeing in the background is obviously Among Us. I, you know, if you don't know this, I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, we doesn't really have a pause menu unless I go to the actual menu itself. But yeah, this is uh, this is just a free play. I think hopefully no one can join this as well. I still don't know how to Fun. play this game completely. I. I know you have to do like tasks. Uh, if you're not the imposter, you have to do like tasks on the other side or like around the around the ship. But I don't know exactly like how to do any of those tasks, you know. So I mean, like some of them I know, but a lot of them I don't. So yeah, I've actually never played it, but I have watched a lot of streamers play it, and I have a pretty good gist on uh, what to do and what not to do. You know, it's really mm-hmm. interesting because like the plays you can do, because it's like uh, for those of you who who know the game dang and rompa but you're just actually mm-hmm. playing with all your friends and stuff yeah. like it's exactly like that it's just who done it that's basically what it is yeah that's what i was gonna say too like man this is like real time dang and rompa you know <laughs> just there's an imposter who you know there's an that mine my, my is the whole like cinematic action for the trials thing like this is exactly uh dang and rompa yeah but at least the trials is like the one um uh, is when we go into the meetings. It's where everyone either starts screaming at each other or logically deduces who the murderer is. I love when people like mess up their uh, their alibis. Like I do that too, but like some people just mess it up like really, really badly. Because you know, so you know how like imposters are the only ones that can go in the vents. Uh, <laughs> I was watching this. Guy oh yeah. Go, I was watching this guy going. I saw I saw Green get murdered after I got out of the vents, and everyone's like, "You <laughs> got out of the vents? <laughs> Hold up." Oh my god! I, I I also love when people have like the most perfect run as imposter, right? Mm-hmm. But then they do one mistake, like accidentally enter the vents when someone's around. They're like, he's like, huh? yeah. <laughs> or, or instances where they're like, uh, you just got out of the vent and there's two people. You kill one of them. He's like, all right, listen, the other guy did it, not me. <laughs> I think my favorite, uh, <laughs> what's it called? My favorite uh, mess up for this one is this guy that. Um, he saw he saw like one of the imposters kill someone, but before he can report the body, two of, uh two of his other teammates walk in and saw him by the body, so they all think that it's him, that the that killed the, the what's it called the uh-huh. killed the the victim, so they all kicked him out and he wasn't he wasn't an imposter. Oh man, those are those are horrible. It's like when you get kicked out and you're like, wait, no, I'm completely innocent, but I don't have an alibi. <laughs> and they're like, nope, sorry, you're out. My favorite clip oh. for this for this game is some guy who called an emergency meeting and typed in the advertisement for Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> and everyone voted oh, them out. <laughs> he, he typed it in in yeah. text chat? It's like, oh, today's video goodness. is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. It cuts off and everyone just like voted him out after that. I was like, dude, you just interrupted an entire gameplay session just for that. That's so funny. 
Oh my god, that is that is meta, honestly. I think my favorite clip is like a. I was watching Noah stream the other day, and my god, he pulled one of the greatest crewmate wins ever. Mm-hmm. So basically, right, he was in, stuck in a situation where it was three people left. There's one imposter, and they were both blaming each other, right? And I was like, uh, uh, he was like, oh man, what do I do here? What do I do, chat? And then uh, he realizes that he has one more task to do, right, for the entire game. And since it was an emergency meeting, it resets the kill timer. But he doesn't know what task it is. So he's like, they both, the, the other two both vote for themselves. And then Noah's like, you know what? Screw it. Votes for himself. And everyone, I bet everyone's face, like, uh, all the other team was like, what? And I was like, I was in there, I was like, bro, are you kidding? What are you doing? You're throwing. And then he goes like, can I beat the kill timer? I never know. He goes. goes it was it was a gas one in a, I forgot what map it is. It's the, I don't know, it's the one with the open space in the middle. Um, but he's up, he's up by, uh, by reactors. With, with the cafeteria? Um, Like in like straight up in the middle cafeteria? Like a huge open cafeteria? Well, no, that's not that one. It's okay. the, it's the one where it has two reactors up on the top of the map, the northern part of the map, and there's one left and there's one right. Um, and then Med Bay is like to the uh, right of the right reactor. If that makes sense. Um, but anyway, he goes to fill in the gas, and it's like, uh, the, the imposter is like right behind him, waiting, mm-hmm. waiting for his kill timer, and then he he wins. Like I was like, what in the world? He won. And apparently, like, the kill timer was, like, five, four seconds away. So I was like, oh, my God, you are a legend. Like, that was probably the most riskiest play I have ever seen. And it's like, oh, my God, that is so, that was so smart. That's like a, that is just... that's like a S&D diffuse, basically. Like, you have, like, oh, five yeah. seconds left. You go for the diffuse, you actually get it. While everyone's, like, oh, I... almost shooting at you or something. Or there's, like... Five seconds left on the clock, and you go for the diffuse, and you actually make it this time. That's crazy. I know, and as other like the other players are closing in on you, about to like snipe you or something, like oh my god, yeah, that was that was insane. Chat was going crazy, the group was going crazy. I was like, my god, that takes some serious game knowledge too. Like assuming that you, like I haven't played enough, or I haven't played at all actually. Mm-hmm. Like to to know you the kill timer and stuff. And it's all custom rules too, right? Like, uh, I don't know if your group plays the custom rules, but they have a custom yeah. thing. It's like, huh. Yeah, I think the only custom rule that we have is that whenever someone gets ejected, it just says, this person got ejected. So you don't know how many imposters are left, basically. I uh, think I think that's a custom rule. I don't know if that's a deal yeah, or yeah, not. Yeah. yeah, I don't exactly know. Yeah. And I like that element as well, because it's like, oh, did we, did we choose the right person? Oh, no, I don't know if we did. <laughs> like, that, uh, that, that is the funniest part. Yeah. Ah, uh, this game so is So you haven't tried playing with uh oops sorry. No no go ahead, go ahead. You haven't tried your griff hasn't tried playing with like uh other settings like um crewmate vision where they decrease um how far you can see or like the kill timer from like I think the default's like what uh twenty five f- seconds? I think for us it's like forty something? I don't know. Oh it's forty? Wow. I actually don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I think well, I think it's forty uh, from the times that I've played. Uh but I could they, that could just be like a that could just be a uh, the uh, custom setting that they've put out. I actually have not tried like too much on exploring the other stuff that you can do in this game. I sort of just jumped in like cold feet, like not knowing anything. Uh, uh-huh. It's been kind of fun, except it's it's hard being an imposter when you don't know the game, because you it's hard to lie if you don't know what the other facets of the game is. Right? It's not like playing a game like a simple game of mafia with your friends where it's easy to lie about stuff because you don't need like in depth game knowledge. Um, but this one, it's like, if you want to lie effectively, you have to know, like, the ins and outs of, of the game. And you have to be lucky saying, like, oh, yeah, I was by cafeteria and storage. And hopefully no one was by there, so they would believe your alibi, you know? So oh, it's, yeah, I know. It's, it's hard. It's it's hard to lie when you don't know how to lie properly, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I think if I knew this game better, it would be a lot easier for me to do that. Oh, yeah, I know. Like... The, the plays I've seen people do just just based off of like pure map knowledge of like my god they are they are sweats like they would put as much hours as we would like playing Call of Duty or something like that I was like wow game. I can't imagine dude maybe like an hour is like an hour hour and a half is the most that I can play this game but 
afterwards it's just like uh, I think I want to move on to something else yeah I get okay. that I see the joy of playing it for long though but you need a good group though because it's not fun if you have like I feel like less than like 8 or 7 yeah and, and it's better to do it with a what's it called it's better to do it with voice chat than it is without voice chat because it's it's easier it's easier to do it without voice chat because obviously like you, you don't it's easier to lie on keyboard than it is on voice but mm-hmm. it's more fun with voice chat because you can hear people like crumbling on the inside or something yeah you can you can pick up some like um verbal ticks basically uh do we have an icebreaker to speak or are we gonna do that or are we gonna go straight to the the gaming use um i do have one but are we are we good on time how long was that segment because that was like wanna... 10 minutes so i think we're good right yeah we don't have too much uh, i guess we can do it real quick right yeah um so basically i've been watching a lot of like mafia gameplay and uh, i'm pretty sure the mafia definitive edition was released today or at least early for some of the content creators i watch mm-hmm. and um it's just so interesting to me like during those time periods the the 20th century from like the 19 uh from the great depression all the way to like the vietnam war it's like uh the, these gangs this is basically held down parts of the city and had like cops under the payroll um territory solidified and they just controlled the market right they would steal gas they would um sell cigarettes or do do whatever illegal activities right yeah and i was just wondering um if given the chance because most of the mafia games are like main characters entering the mafia life from either from a regular joe from like mafia one um or from when you were born it's just some connection with your friends or in mafia three you come home, um, shit hits the fan, and then you have to do stuff you have to do. So I was just wondering if you, let's say, given the chance you're in the 1950s, um, would you join, or say there's... Yeah, let's just start with that. Would you join the Mafia if given the chance or had to do? Absolutely not. No, I am not. I am <laughs> I am way too scared for that kind of stuff to really join. Well, I guess, I guess back then it's probably different because, like... The perception of what the mafia is is probably different from what we know now. You know, like back then, like people were like, "Oh yeah, it's legal, but it's a source of income." You know, kind of kind of stuff where it's not. Because I think, like growing up, like whenever I read about the mafia, you know, in the history books, in the history books and whatnot, I always sort of associated it with like a high class kind of gang in a sense. So I and like it's portrayed in a way where it's it's equated to being a bad thing. You know, like, yeah, you'll get, like, a lot of money, but you live a hard life of danger and, you know, crime and whatnot. So, I think 90% of me is going to say no. Like, I would not want to join the mafia. But there's probably, like, a t- like a 10% of me that goes, well, if it's a source of income during the 1950s, you know, given given the state of the world after World War II, I think maybe I'll, I'll do, like, grunt work. You know, I'll, I'll do something like that. So, I think for the most part, no. <laughs> I would not join the mafia. Mm-hmm. And that, I thought about that too. It's like whether or not I would join or not. And I'm thinking like, at some point, I'm pretty sure a lot of the people had encounters with the mafia. And uh, say like you're a business owner back then. Like if business is bad, like it was in um, shown in Mafia One. Mm-hmm. Um, that game takes place in the Great Depression, by the way. Uh, like you're going to need a loan, right? And yeah. most of the loans, you, you you can't really go to the bank. So you take a loan from a loan shark or a mob boss or the family, and then what then, right? Because now you owe them money or owe them money every month um, just to pay it off. And it's like, if I don't pay up every month, even if I don't hit the quota, um, then most likely they're going to hit the, like, you know. Uh, I don't. It, it's obviously cut from a video game, so I don't know how accurate this is compared in comparison to real life, but... In the games, they show that they either beat you up or they damage some stuff within your restaurant, stuff like that. And then obviously that debt gets added to next month's total. So I was like, oh man, do should I just go into to the life of crime in case I can't pay? You know, that way I can just live kind of freely until the point where, you know, I either get shot in the back or I talk to a cop to get some, uh, what is it called? Safety. I got, yeah, safety. I forgot the technical term, but yeah, some safety. Yeah. Something like that. Sanction? I don't know. 
I, I forgot. I, I literally just watched it. Like, I just watched what it's called. Um, but whatever the case, um, but it's, I don't know. It's always, it, it's always intrigued me. It, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I, I feel like it's not worth it for the most part. Cause it's like, you're either, if, cause the, 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 the risks versus reward isn't really, isn't really worth it. You know, like the risk, like the risk of like getting sh- not not only dying in, in the in the line of work right like if you if you encounter a cop so robbing a bank or something under the mafia you're definitely gonna like have to risk your life to get out of that situation but if you also don't deliver then they're gonna you know the the bo- your boss isn't gonna be very happy and unlike real life bosses for the most part they're gonna want to like get some compensation back from you a compensation back either by you know taking out their anger on you by beating the shit out of you or by just you know grabbing money from your savings or something like that i don't know so it's i feel like the cons of working at a mafia outweigh the pros which is you know the money that you get from it which i mean i I, maybe i'm wrong but like i don't think the money really is is worth it like it's it's not it's not that much where you know it's worth risking your life for that because i think if it was i think a lot of people a lot more people would, would have joined the mafia in a sense it's just that the mafia, I think, provides a way for people to earn money in an otherwise financial situation where they can't. Like, it's a, it's a way to earn quick money, but you also need to be able to keep up with with the ongoing, um, what's it called? With the ongoing uh, workflow for, for the mafia, right? You have to keep up, you have to keep up with your debts, you have to keep up with your tasks and whatnot. You know, it's, it's, it's there for people who really, really need the money, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I feel yeah, like that's and, what a lot and, of uh, to to play like devil's advocate, right? Say it's it, it is different for us because you know we're living now. Obviously, you, there's there's laws that we know of back then. It wasn't so strict, and you can get a lot, uh, away with a lot more stuff. Mm-hmm. So maybe for those back then that were in the mafia, it's like, oh, uh, I'm not gonna get caught as long as none of us like screw up, right? If none of us slip, none of us talk, we're we're safe, right? Yeah. But obviously history shows that not not everyone gets away clean right like um i don't know how many like gangs are still out there uh that are up to tier as was like for the mafia was but at some point everyone either got snitched on dead or in jail for life right Mm -hmm. so it's just thinking about it's like yeah it's not like it would be nice to have all these millions and millions of dollars in times of like you know uh financial stress but I'd rather be poor and alive than, uh, well, the the quote they use is "poor and alive, but rich and dead" or something like that. Right. I I think it's, it's only. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. I think there's really only two kinds of people that really are into mafia. One is if you're like if that's it, like your family, you're born to that. Um. Slash, you know, you you have a lot of money and you just wanna you just wanna earn more money as an as an underside table kind of thing like a, like an underground kind of thing you know um so like the rich slash people who are born into it or people who are poor need the money to actually uh, you know get a living i think the average person back then during the 1950s like the middle class people they probably wouldn't join the mafia because there's no reason to you know like they're not they're not usually in de- like a desperate need of money and they're not rich enough to you know start their own mafia or or to or to really invest in the mafia right so it really wouldn't make sense for them to join so it's really just the upper class and the lower class that would get into that kind of business, I would say. Yeah, those who like, um, who absolutely have like sort of no choice. Like, yeah, yeah they have to do it. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to see your thoughts on that. I've been watching a lot of it, and uh, I just rewatched Goodfellas recently. It's very interesting to me. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of ma- a lot of the mafia probably like sort of like uh what's it called the different kinds of like mafia gangs i don't know if there's like i don't know if there's just one or there's multiple but a lot of them probably like bought out the other ones over over time too so there probably really isn't a lot left nowadays you know yeah That's not um high. just a quick thing on how it works is like the um, throughout what i've seen and what i've watched is they're like there's different families right um let's just say in mafia one the two main families that are shown are the morellos and ciliaries mm-hmm. so basically um i forgot which town it is but they have their own territory like two territories morello 
um, in the beginning of the game is the bigger one, and then Ciliary is the one that's up and coming. Um, and throughout the games, how it works is that, you know, one just takes over more territory over time by either winning the people's trust, um, buying them out, or, you know, taking out the competition. And, uh, and that's it. And shown if you've ever watched Godfather or any of the other Godfather movies, um, I forgot the name, but the son eventually takes or consolidates his power by just eliminating all the other leaders, um, all at once, leaving a vacuum of power just for him to take over. Um, mm. solidifying him as the strongest family and the most powerful family. Mm. But Yeah, I've never played any of the Mafia games nor watched any of the Godfather movies. Uh, not gonna lie, like that wasn't really my, my cup of tea back then. And even now, in a sense, it's like, you know, it's I've seen it in movies, but it's never really something that I'm like, ooh, I want to know more about Mafia lore, that kind of stuff. Closest thing that I've really gotten to that is, uh, what's it called? Ruby in Saints Row. Oh, no, no. oh Ruby. <laughs> yeah. Uh the two characters, Roman and Neo, they're kinda like they're not the mafia, but like they kinda give out like the same mafia vibes in a sense. Um, you know, like they're like an underground gang kind of thing. I don't know. But no, I've never really been interested in the mafia lore. It's it's like with cowboys. Like I'm not really interested in like cowboys and all that kind of stuff, like the lore and whatnot. It's just not it's just not my cup of tea, I guess. Yeah, I'm with you there, man. I don't the, the what it's a cool concept the west like the cowboys but it's just not not mine either yeah um but what is our cup of tea is medieval stuff with knights and shining armor exactly and let's just say a big company just bought out one of uh bethesda that and though in our favorite games some of our favorite games is uh along with that so would you like to start off with the the main topic here yeah that's actually a pretty good. I was like looking for a way to like segment to that, and like that was actually a pretty good segment that uh, that I did not see that that you yep. made mistake. Uh, so yeah, so the main topic for today is basically Bethesda purchasing or not Bethesda purchasing Microsoft purchasing uh, Zenimax Studios, who owns a lot of other companies, most notably uh, Bethesda, right? And Bethesda is known for a lot of their games, such as the Elder Scrolls series. Uh, aka Skyrim for a lot of you who aren't invested in the other Elder Scrolls. Um, Doom as well and Fallout series, right? Now, this is a big deal because potentially speaking, a lot of these games could now become uh, Microsoft exclusive. I don't know if it's going to become Xbox exclusive. I, I don't see it happening um, with a lot of it. With a lot of the... With games like, with games like Skyrim and Doom... And even follow to a certain extent, I I can't see them becoming exclusive, but we'll we'll talk about that later. But anyways, this is actually a really big deal because they spent seven point five billion dollars to purchase this company, and if they make some of these some of these series exclusives, it now gives a direct competition to PlayStation, because that was what this whole competition. Because before this deal, that was what this whole. Uh, competition is about right with with PlayStation having more exclusives compared to Xbox, but now there's a possibility that not only will Xbox match those um, those number of, of exclusive of exclusives, right? Or but they might actually surpass it because of the other companies that work under uh, Zenimax Studios. So that's kind of like what we're going to talk about it about today and our, and our thoughts about this whole situation in a sense. Yeah, it's uh, it was very surprising. I'm like, wait, whoa, they just bought out, um, basically three games, three popular games. It, um, it, I, it's not just that. It's actually a lot more than just those three games. It's I think Wolfenstein too is another, the uh, what's it called, the the parent company. I don't know who made Wolfenstein actually, so sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, but like it's the ones that are noticeable to like uh, to most people, or at least the, all the websites I read. Is like just talking about the main games that they noticed. Now, I've never played Fallout. Um, I've played both um, Doom, Doom Eternal, and Skyrim. And let me tell you, those are amazing games, right? And yeah. it, just from a fan standpoint, it's going to suck if you cut off like half of your audience or half of your consumers by making it an Xbox exclusive, right? Do you think, um, do you think that they're going to make... Um, games like games like the Elder Scrolls or Fallout or Doom, Microsoft exclusive 
or specifically, I guess, Xbox exclusive uh, games? Um, I honestly think no, because I've read some tweets. I read some tweets from Bethesda, and they were like, Bethesda is still Bethesda. We're still working on our previous projects, and nothing's really going to change. So I'm thinking, like, okay, um, Microsoft may be uh, the owner, right? Um, I think it's called Parent Company. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Maybe the parent. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Whatever the big the company that owns them, right? Um, but it would not be in their best interest to make it exclusives because l- looking at it to me is like, okay, PS Five just released, um, just did their event. They showed off what they had to offer, and they showed up a lot of good exclusives. Miles Morales, um, God of War coming out next year, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, all that type of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just there's going to be a lot of people on PS Five in the next uh, few years and i truly believe that they kind of just outshined xbox in every way for all the events um besides the the parts within the consoles ps4 really blasted them out the water and if you cut off that many people from playing game their favorite games like skyrim or doom you're gonna lose a lot of money i feel like they're gonna lose a lot of money right Mm -hmm. so the demand for those games will go down and you know Bethesda or Microsoft won't be too happy if they just make exclusives to the Xbox console or to like themselves. Right. It's it's hard to say for me because it's like no company spent seven point five billion dollars to not make something to to not have some sort of like massive return from that. You know, I feel like if not if not right now, they're eventually going to make future titles exclusive to the Xbox or exclusive to to microsoft right and they and these companies have the power to do so you know like we we're talking about things like bethesda here we're talking about things people that produce things like rage or uh the elder scrolls dishonored uh wolfenstein uh the evil within all that kind of stuff there are these companies that will be able to produce high quality games um high quality exclusives for that right so there's got to be some sort of return from microsoft here they, they would not spend seven point billion seven point five billion dollars to not make some sort of ex- exclusive in the future, uh, besides Halo and Gears of War, I guess, you know. So, it's it's most likely that they're not gonna make. For in my opinion, it's most likely that they're, that they're not going to make Elder Scrolls, Doom, and Fallout exclusives because those series have a long running um, fan base for all consoles. Well, Elder Scrolls maybe because. I think it wasn't until the PlayStation 3 that we were able to play Elder Scrolls in the first place. Um, but I think before that, it was it was mainly Xbox and Xbox and PC. So Elder Scrolls, I think, is a high chance of not becoming a PlayStation 5 title. Um, which kind of worries me because, you know, that's, that's a lot of people that are not going to get that. And that was when I first experienced an Elder Scrolls game. But something like Doom that has, you know, that has history with PlayStation or something like Fallout, I think. That has history with PlayStation, it's it's less than likely that they're gonna become Xbox slash Microsoft exclusives. I feel like, but they're definitely gonna be like there's definitely gonna be titles in the future that will be uh, exclusive title. Oh yeah, and uh, I don't disagree with that. It's 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 the smart move of their point because obviously um, Sony has a, a bunch of like these awesome games exclusives, so they need to hit a level of the playing field. Obviously. That's my thought process. I don't think they're going to make games that are already known throughout both consoles exclusive. But future games that are possibly going to be on par with like those type of games, Doom, um, um, the Elder Scrolls, big games like that exclusive to their console and see how the, the consumers, the audience reacts to that and see whether they're going to, are they going to swing towards buying more Xboxes or are they just going to stick with the exclusives that ps5 has right mm-hmm. so with with when it comes to these to these exclusives right um i was gonna say are you worried that or do you think that xbox might surpass playstation in terms of not not just number of exclusives but the quality of exclusives or do you think it's just going to be about even or below playstation quality um Let's see. For the short t- short term, within like the next couple of years, I don't think they will. I think eventually, give or like say, 
10, 20 years ish, it'll probably be even. Um, Cause at that point, once you like, you know, upgrade a console, upgrade a system enough, they're just going to overlap with how well they can do, how well they perform. Right. Like mm-hmm. with computers. So at that, they're just going to be competing to make the better game to make the perfect world, the best multiplayer, BR, whatever. Right. So eventually, yeah, I do think that they will be sort of on even levels, but for the foreseeable future, man, like PlayStation just has it all. Who doesn't love dad of boy, the um, girl with mm, bow, girl with um, uh, Indiana, uh, Indiana you died screened. So Indiana Jones simulator. Yes. <laughs> 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 it's just like the, those, those are too good, man. And yeah. like, it's, you want Xbox to win for competition. You want them to make better games. You want to see them do well. But I don't know. PlayStation is right now just it's still win- wow. still winning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's that's kind of like that's that's part of the. So the reason why I asked that question is because when I saw this announcement happen, I didn't really think too much of it because even even if they purchase Bethesda, right? Even if they purchase, you know, these people. Uh, or these companies, sorry. Uh, it's like, like no offense to Bethesda, but they haven't really come out with any. Besides Doom, um, a lot of their franchises like Fallout, um, hasn't really been doing well. You know, like Beth- Bethesda's kind of like not the same as they were before, right? Like they haven't released an Elder Scrolls, a new Elder Scrolls game in a long while. Skyrim is, it's still there, but like it's it's basically non-existent because. You know, they haven't really released any DLC for that. Fallout is doing very, very bad right now because of the whole Fallout 76 thing. Um, and some I'm looking at, like, this library from of games from ZeniMax Studios, like, just or ZeniMax Media, just seeing, like, what other games they have. Things like, they have Rage, they have Prey, Elder Scrolls Online, Dishonored, uh, Wolfenstein, Evil Within. They're all good games, right? They're all good games, but they're not God of War level. They're not The Last of Us level. They're not spider-man miles morales level you know what i mean like they're, they're all good games but they're all like just just from the just from the um just from the reviews and the overall impressions that i'm getting from around the internet they're not 10 out of 10 games they're, they're like eight or nine at best right elder scrolls is really the biggest thing that they have going on for them but the other games aren't really on par in terms of quality and that's kind of like why i'm not really phased uh phased by this whole deal it's because like yeah you you bought a lot of these game companies and if you really want to you can make them exclusives sure you might surpass sony in terms of number of exclusives but these these exclusives aren't aren't that great you know like they're not they're not anything home to write about you know if, if you were to like elder scrolls is like your biggest thing right now that that you could potentially make an exclusive but every one of these other games like they're they're decent they're good they're better than the average games but they're not God of War. They're not Spider Man. They're not Uncharted. That kind of stuff, you know. So it's like, I don't know. It, it's it doesn't really it doesn't really worry me, or it doesn't. I feel like it doesn't really make too much of a difference, in a sense. It just means that I can't play Elder Scrolls Six on PlayStation. That's pretty much it. Yeah, and I totally agree to you because when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, cool. But it wasn't until I read it later. It's like, oh man, I might not have the chance to play, you know. Elder Scrolls Six or Doom, the new Doom games, but I'm like, if it if it's on Xbox, it's most likely going to be on PC eventually, right? And I do plan on getting a PC within the next five years, hopefully. Yeah. So it's like, it's it's whatever, and it's the it's the argument that we made, um, in our last podcast is like, if you're just going to buy an Xbox, just get a PC, mm-hmm. right? And so at that point, it's like, okay, yeah, maybe I can't, I won't be able to play these games right now. But if the games are as good as they were before, I'll still be able to play it on PC or any of the Xbox exclusives, probably on PC. So it's nothing really much to sweat about. It, it just seems like a big deal because you throw in the $7.5 billion along with the other big name titles or games. And you're like, oh man, PS5 might, might lose. But we're like, uh, not really. You know, quantity doesn't always mean quality. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people were saying like, "Oh my God, this is a big deal," but I'm sitting here like, "Is it really though?" Like, but that's the, <sighs> like I said, they're not they're not what they used to be. Like, they're not Bioware levels of bad, but they're not, 
they're also not that great anymore as far as i can as, as far as what i can see basically i don't know I guess, yeah i know yeah it's it's uh it's 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 interesting to say the least to see if they do eventually make good exclusives um good exclusives come like say a year from now when the console's already set bugs are out the way and they can focus on making some good content right Mm -hmm. um but short term yeah i pretty i'm pretty sure playstation has won this battle (laughs) yeah it's especially right now because like the game pass doesn't offer as much as or the xbox game pass doesn't offer as much as the playstation plus uh game game pass you know like we have we're getting a lot of games but as far as i can tell uh, microsoft is getting a lot of it's not getting a lot of ex- of uh, exclusive right now, I think. What's even on the Xbox Game Pass? I have. Trend, so. That's a good question, actually. We can look that up. Because, let's see, I, if I remember PS5, right, it has, uh, I think, Mortal Kombat X, Uncharted, um, Persona 5, God of War, there's Last a, of Us. There's, there's a lot. There's a lot of good games, yeah. Yeah, like those. But... Trademarks it, and exclusives, to say the least. But Xbox... Mm-hmm. Halo. Um, yeah, Halo's War. one. They better have Halo in there, otherwise, I don't know what they're doing. Destiny 2. Uh, oh, wait, no. This is this week. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Destiny hmm. 2. Uh, I mean, yeah, Destiny 2's gotten uh, popping off, I guess. It's been a while since I played Destiny. Yeah. What do you think about that, too? I, I, I remember watching the stream. Uh, where the developers were talking about, like, yeah, we're probably not going to come out with another Destiny game. We're just going to focus on upgrading Destiny 2. I think that's what they should have done in the first place, to be quite honest. Like, they should... Destiny 2 should not have even come out, in my personal opinion. Like, yeah, I think, like, it's nice that they had all these improvements to the UI and all like, all that stuff. But I feel like that's something that they could have done slowly over time as well, instead of just doing it, like, in one massive uh, big update. Destiny 2 should not have existed in my personal opinion. I think they should they should have just kept updating from the Taken King and just or from the from the Destiny 1 engine and just kind of kept going and going with that thing. You know, and all the UI updates that they that they had, they could have totally done that with Destiny 1. Like it's it's totally possible. Maybe not like all at once, but it's possible. You know. Yeah, and then if you if you just play just a little bit, there's like very very subtle differences where the points like okay, this feels like the same game, and then the story, right? Um, I'm pretty sure Destiny Two just starts out the same way, right? Or am I wrong? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, like no powers and whatnot. That's yeah, yeah. It's, so it's kind of it, you know. Just yeah, I don't know. It's so I, yeah, like I feel like they should not have gotten Destiny Two out. I think that's what they should have done in the first place. Destiny yeah. has an identity crisis, in my opinion. Like when it first came out, it was like, do we want to be more like an MMO? Do we do we want to be more like a single player? Do we want to be more like, uh, you know, a shooter or not, or a, a looter shooter? And it's like, yeah, you should just be a looter shooter and just don't focus too much on the story. Just put it on the background and just make it there. You know, like have cool lore in the background, kind of like what Dark Souls and what you know the Soulsborne games does. But don't focus too much on like making cinematics or making like a focused storyline you know because I, f- I feel like a lot of people complained about that and destiny one because that's what they expected but having played destiny or having played the actual game it's like no that's not really the thing that that's not really how it was gonna go in a sense i feel like they should have just done like an mmo like vibe where it's like yeah there's story but it's more so in the background rather than rather than uh being told in cinematics people were expecting mass effect first person shooter style is what I'm thinking, basically. And that's not... I don't think that was the way that Destiny should have gone. And that's kind of like what they're trying to do with the newer updates, or at least with Destiny 2. They, they tried doing that. And it just doesn't work. It it just doesn't mesh well with Destiny's gameplay. You know? Yeah, and uh, I'm more of like a sort of baby-ish when it comes to Destiny, because I play Destiny 1 going in without any expectation or not knowing what it is. Um, besides, the, it's a mix between Halo, or what that was told, Halo and Call of Duty, right? So, I played it and I loved it, but I do agree that sometimes uh, it does get a little annoying or repetitive when you get to hear the story over again. It's just like, 
just let, let me loot, let me kill some aliens and upgrade my character over and over again. Because that's what is the appeal of the, of the game, right? Yeah. Getting loot, beating bosses, just as simple as that. It's like a... Uh, not a dungeon crawler, but it's sort of, it's just like a boss. Beat yeah, boss, get beat geared, boss, get run it again. Brute. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I want to play Destiny for. It's it's a looter shooter with like MMO uh, elements to it. I mean, then again, all all all, sh all looter games have MMO elements to it, you know, I feel like. But yeah, that's just me. That's, I wish I could play Destiny again. But it's just so complex nowadays that it's hard to. It's hard to get into it. It's hard to really play the game again. You know, it's... It, yeah, and that's one of the big reasons why for Destiny 2 I didn't get the season pass for the other DLCs because it's like, uh, it's cool, but, you know, it kind of I kind of feel burnt out because everything just kind of seems meh at this point. There's nothing really to spice it up besides adding cooler weapons or, you know, I, don't, I never really played the multiplayer, the PvP, I mean. Mm -hmm. Um... So there's nothing really else that would entice me to play. So, yeah, it's really meh. Yeah. Although I will say that like Destiny One, House of Wolves was still probably the most one of the most enjoyable. For me personally, it was one of the most enjoyable uh, games that I that I played essentially because I, I I loved everything about it. It's like, yeah, like you have you have these high level high level not raids in, at that point. It was it was more like a like a like a small dungeon but it was like the difficulties like spiked up by a lot right you have like different strategies for these guys um you have, you have a pretty good sense of gear progression for the most part and you also have like one of the best pvp seasons in destiny where they introduced uh trials of osiris if you win like nine games in a row you get to go to the lighthouse or something like that it was it was so fun i never got to the lighthouse that's that's the one thing i i, I wish i did but yeah I never played enough of Destiny 1. I didn't even buy the DLC to know what the House of Wolves are. So <laughs> it's... <laughs> I have nothing to say, but I know a lot of people love love Destiny and they're very passionate about it. It's just... It it, it does kind of suck seeing where it is now because I, I loved it too for a good part. Like I played that for three months straight without any breaks, basically. Um, yeah, it's it sucks when a game just turns meh you know yeah yeah it's oh. and once you once you're away from it for a long while it's like you don't you, you kind of lose the motivation to come back because now there's a lot of systems that you need to catch up on towards and it's like i don't really want to learn any of these new systems anymore i kind of i don't know i just kind of want to get back to the group of things right but the group of things has changed you know it's it's not it's not the same anymore that was the thing with fortnite for me as well um it's just they they were constantly changing it updating it every week um the player base isn't really getting any better it's just everyone is collectively moving up um and it it gets super annoying because like okay yay i got used to this meta but now you changed it again and then you also tended to a lower you know player base yeah uh we talked about that last time to an extent but it's like you're for the hardcore fans or the ones that you know are actually in the game to play the game and enjoy it, you're making it suck for them more because you're constantly changing it, con changing what the core of the game is, right? And it's just, ugh, it sucks. Such good games I was into just goes to shit. Yeah. I feel like that's how all, that's how a lot, a lot of multiplayer games are. It's like, they're going to be constantly changing stuff and if you don't keep up, if you, if you don't if you don't stay within the group of things you're not gonna you're not gonna have a fun time when you go back when you eventually go back essentially that, that's how I felt with uh with call of duty when I got back after so after modern warfare 3 I, I essentially quit call of duty right I, I didn't play I, I barely played black ops 2 and after black ops 2 I think I just played black ops 1 for just a little bit um or not a little bit about a year essentially with you guys right but then I, I got back to Call of Duty around 2016-ish, or 2015-ish, right, to, with Black Ops 3. And th just, there's, there's just, like, so many changes to the game that I, I guess, didn't really keep up with. 
right? Like the new score streak system was a lot more than I expected. Um, the new movement system as well. It's like, I don't know. It's it's the nature of multiplayer games, I guess. Just not being able to keep up. Yeah, and I, I'd bet it would be very, very hard to get used to when you go from boots on the ground to woo. I am now in space. <laughs> yeah. Jetpacks and all that such. The so wall running stuff. I I just feel like the maps were too small for the wall running. They they should have been a little bit bigger for that. In my personal opinion. Isn't that kind of ironic? The, the 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 game with the fastest like pace or the fastest movement speed has the smallest maps, but then we go back to playing like even in the Cold War Alpha or Modern Warfare, they have big ass maps yeah. for just like five v five gameplay. I'm like, what? Like put put like Arclaw Peak in, in in Black Ops Three or something, or put like what's it called? Atlas Superstore in Black Ops Three. I think that would have flowed actually well. Or something. yeah, right. Yeah. Or what's that map? The 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 big map with the castle in the middle. Um, castle. Oh, uh, Anaya Palace. It's like a, yeah, yeah, that. Put yeah, that. Put into that in Black Ops Three. Yeah. Like what? What were the maps in there? I don't even remember. I think. Yeah, I don't remember the maps in uh, in Black Ops Three uh, besides Nuke Man, I, don't, I just I remember it. Eventually, we just stuck with playing Nuke Town, like how we played shoot to shoot the ship, and then uh, yeah, that playlist over and over again. So there was that one small map too that was pretty popular before Nuke Town became a regular thing too. Yeah. God, I love Nuke Town. Oh, I wish so I wish horrible. they would. I wish they would. Uh, I wish they would return that. Do you still have Black Ops Three downloaded? Do I? I, I yeah, I do because I played Zombies. Yeah, maybe I should re-download that game again. Oh, <laughs> is that a possible video idea? Black that's Ops that's, Three, uh, see how it holds up. See how it holds up to this day. Yeah, I guess again. I still, I think I still have my copy here. If I haven't already like torn it in half for all. The <laughs> pain. Oh my god, I have the the digital version when it was uh, free on PSN, right? So I was like, I'll just download this so I don't have to mess with the disc anymore. Oh, so, really? That's that's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have. A, um, I have. I still have the disc with me, but it probably costs a lot of uh, a lot of gigabytes to to play. Oh, uh, it's probably like, how, how? What's the file size in that thing? It's a, it's a decent amount. Um, I mean, I I don't have to worry about it because I I always have extended storage. But I think it's only around sixty ish gigs nice. compared to you know the other atrocity <laughs> of the game. The other fucking juggernaut. Two hundred gigabytes, dude. That's gonna be the future yeah. of Call of Duty, man. Like we we're gonna have big ass Call of Duty games. And yeah, it's the way that Modern Warfare set it up, because I'm pretty sure you explained it to me it's because of all the, the skins and like the, the bundles and stuff, whatever that's, it's called. That's what I that's what I heard. That that's what I that's what people that's what I saw like some people like tell me on Reddit. Like that's why that's why we have a big ass file size because technically we already have those bundles, those skins downloaded, right? We have all those skins downloaded. Mm-hmm. That's why when we purchase it, um, it's immediately in our inventory. We, we don't have to like go to the store to download it as well. Unlike Black Ops Two, where if you wanted the bacon camo or whatever it was, you had to download the camo itself and you had to wait, you know, to download it. But they just give you everything right now, so it's like, yeah, that's. Uh, that's probably why, because we have all we have all those already downloaded in our files. Yeah, it. I mean, hey, it makes sense. It's efficient, I guess. Yeah. How did Overwatch do it? Because all the skins were basically there immediately, right? Yeah, but I think most of the skins were like. How do I say this? I don't think they cost. Simple. Yeah, they're they're simple. They're, they were mostly for the most part like, color palette swaps or like minor changes here and there. There's 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 some skins that are like complete outfit changes, right? But I feel like Overwatch or Blizzard is very efficient efficient with their with their uh what's it called? With how they handle the game. Because I think Overwatch is like what, 80, 80 gigabytes like at most. And that's after uh-huh. like three years. The initially it was like twenty or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean Overwatch is, is nice. I miss Overwatch yeah, it, too. I know. And I'm excited that for that as well. Um what we didn't talk about a lot of podcasts is Overwatch too, right? Yeah. Because uh I don't know when that's coming out. I forgot. There's uh, no release. If even announced date. There's no release date yeah, no yet. Re- no. But um, uh, so I guess since we're talking about Destiny and Overwatch, uh, so for me, Destiny and Overwatch were like the two greatest, uh, not greatest multiplayer games, obviously, but they were like 
they were the two time periods that I enjoyed playing multiplayer games at most. Fortnite was also really fun, like when I, when it was not serious and people were just screwing around essentially. But in terms of like serious fun, Overwatch and um, what's it called Overwatch and Destiny were like probably my most enjoyable ones. So I guess I guess the question I have for you is, what multiplayer game is probably the most fun that you've had playing? Um, in terms of like, I guess. Yeah, what's what's the what's the multiple game that you've had the most fun playing? Hmm. I'm assuming this is like throughout throughout, right? That like a Fortnite situation. Uh, I mean, like, you could still say Fortnite because I think you had a lot of fun in there, right? Because like, even though nowadays you yeah. don't play it anymore, you still had a lot of fun with that with that with uh when we were playing it. But I mean, I'm I'm not talking about like, I'm not talking about like oh like the game was really good. I'm talking about like the game was really good and. You know, like when I was playing with people, it was also really fun as well. Like we had a lot of fun playing with, with others. Like the overall uh-huh. experience, I guess. Like which which uh, which game would you say would that be? Huh. Well, man, I would see. It's hard because I'm um, like now I'm thinking about it. All the multiplayer games I've really played are some variation of zombies or <laughs> shooters so which is mainly just call of duty right yeah um besides overwatch uh and titanfall 2 but um not a lot of our friends play titanfall 2 mm-hmm. it was only like five of us i think yeah. which i think is probably going to be the case for cold war so i guess it's not too big um honestly the game the two i'll say two the two games that i probably enjoyed the most are um probably titanfall 2 and then any of the zombies experiences um because those to me it was like i i think yeah i would say titanfall 2 is probably one of the, the best shooters i played in terms of movement um the how the maps designs are the, um, has sort of like a i forgot what it's called like it's like a meta theme thing where you you play monarch but then you have a a counter if someone's using like something else right i, I don't know what the the weaknesses of each thing are but um even if i only played with like you know kyle lyle Gian, um i think sometimes you right yeah um with like a small group of people it was still a lot of fun like uh i love mechs uh any game with mechs any anime with mechs so it just truly really fits right in for me um but um besides that it's probably zombies because you know i probably i probably said it a lot of times to you but for those who don't know like zombies is my 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 go back like my thing i've always fall back on mm, that's your forte <clears throat> basically yeah like i started out playing video games um on a console with zombies i fell in love with zombies and i've been playing it up to this day regardless of how shitty you know black ops 4 <laughs> zombies was um or had just like, the amount of people i didn't play with it's just like my progression throughout those games it's like okay it's a puzzle game it's a survival as well. Just do this, get the last achievement done. It's just like, it's so simple. But then if you go into it, it's really complex. And then if they do it right, they have an amazing storyline with the Aether. Um, the chaos was all right. But it's just it's just that type of stuff that I always enjoy, even if I'm playing solo or with a group. It's just practicing this one thing over and over again. It's like taking an exam, right? You study, you practice and over and over again to the point where you can actually complete the test and do everything correct and basically flawless that that to me is the most appealing part so yeah i would say zombies and any zombies experience in titanfall 2 nice yeah i never it's weird i got into apex legends but i got i never got into titanfall i i mean it's not it's not a bad game honestly it's it's, it's a good game from what i've played in it i think i think for me like it's the mechs part that i didn't really enjoy i don't know it's it's weird Maybe maybe if I spent more time in the game, I think I would have enjoyed Titanfall 2, right? Uh, I honestly think you would have enjoyed it a lot. Um, obviously, you said you didn't play a lot of time, but like me and Jin played like a hefty amount of it, and we got to the point where you know we we understand the movement of each Titan, how to use our surroundings, and it just became like a fighting game. Um, and obviously, if you just add objectives on top of it, it kind of turns into an Overwatch type thing. Yeah, you know, you have different classes, do your role. And it, it turned it just I don't know. It was really fun. 
I think what I didn't like about Titanfall 2 in general was the the bots, the uh, the AI, the uh-huh. NPC, yeah, the AI around you. Because I was like, I just want this. I, I guess I'm used to just just strictly having, just strictly having uh, what's it called? Strictly having players on the battlefield and not like enemy AI, basically, right? Like I don't mind that for something like Dota or League of Legends, where you know killing those AI was necessary for. Uh, progressing your character but when it comes to when it comes to titanfall when i feel like killing the ai doesn't really amount to much besides like one or two points you know um it's really it's really not fun like having like those distractions on the battlefield when i just wanted to be focused on me versus the enemy kind of stuff kind of type of deal you know i think i think that's one of the reasons why i never got too much into it and why i why i sort of enjoyed apex legends for the most part and even that, mm-hmm. that's a that's a stretch. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. What's it called? I I would have to agree with you there. The grunts. Um, when I first playing it, I'm like, what's the point? Besides giving you like one extra point to your score. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you just kind of do your job, kill the pilots, kill the titans, you get enough score to even like place top three, right? Yeah. Um, the it's it's like a filler type thing. It's a it's a theme with the game that makes it different. Um, you know. It's it's just a thing to raise your score just in case you haven't seen anyone in a long time because the maps are big, yeah. right? The maps are relatively big. It's it uh, feels like unnecessary filler though. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with you. I don't think it's it's really redundant. Like you don't need it. But mm-hmm. I don't know if you played any of the Frontier Defense. It's like the zombies mode of that game. I did. I uh, I guess I didn't really know what the heck was going on, so that's why like I I didn't enjoy it. But I didn't. I didn't enjoy it at all. It's like I'd rather play zombies than this because I don't know. When I first played it, I was like, "The hell's going on? What are these traps?" Like, like you guys were telling me to do stuff, and I'm like, "I don't know what the hell." Like half the stuff you guys are telling me to do, man. Like I don't know. I I'm just starting on this game. I don't know the controls. I don't know the terminology. It, what the hell is a R301 or something like that? Or what the hell is a mine? I, I don't know. Yeah, and it's 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 just really hard because. That frontier defense is mainly for those who know their titan in and out, what to do, how to beat certain titans, right? Um, I can see how for you it's not like not super appealing because it's like you don't know what's happening. Because yeah. I, I know that that's me when, uh, whenever we play like a fighting game or anything, like play Smash, I'm like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm here. Yeah, if, if I had spent more time in that game, I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more. Which, man, like, now that we're talking about this, it's like, I kind of want to re-download both Black Ops 3 and Titanfall just to, like, just to see what, uh, what, what the gameplay is like nowadays, you know? Like, just to see, just to see if I would end up liking it. Now that I play a lot of Apex Legends, it's like, am I gonna like Titanfall? Am I gonna like this? I don't know. We'll see. I just think, hey, man, I'm always down to play some Titanfall or some Black Ops again. Yeah. Because those, those two games, is that, well, uh, ish ish but they're pretty good <laughs> yeah because right now modern warfare it's like dude it's super sweaty man like going on snd by yourself it's not fun <laughs> especially like after i fucked up my my skill based matchmaking it's like dude i'm playing against people that are like really really good and right now i'm trying to play aggressive like i'm trying to get used to specialists and rushing so i'm even i'm doing even more worse right compared to how it used to be it's it's not mm-hmm. fun with with this game but yeah, I I think it's for Modern Warfare it's different for me because I always play super aggressive because that's how I played in Fortnite and whatever. Mm. I've been running around with the AX50. I wouldn't care because I know I'd probably quick scope them fast enough before they even hit me. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's it's definitely hard. Skill based matchmaking. People have their own grievances, but I'm like, yeah, you know, sometimes we just need a break. We don't need to be you know, sitting on the edge of our seat every game. Yeah. Speaking of uh, skill-based matchmaking and Black Ops in general, what did you... Uh, it's kind of giving me impressions for the Black Ops Cold War Alpha. Hmm. Okay, so uh, I'll be doing most of my comparisons to Modern Warfare because uh, uh, that's the most recent game. Yes. The first thing that I noticed, because... Um, uh, I've decided I'm just going to basically be sniping the entire time throughout the game um, with the secondary of like a submachine gun or whatever. Um, first thing I noticed with with sniping is that it's it's definitely more fluid a little bit. Like the quick scoping is obviously faster. The guns are okay. 
Yeah. But whenever you kill someone, it's not really as satisfying as Modern Warfare. Mm-hmm. Right? I don't know if it has something to do with like the sound of a headshot or a body shot or how the like the reload or the rebolting sounds like. I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good. That's, that that maybe just me just speaking or like being used to Modern Warfare and how that sniping is. But it it I don't know. It doesn't feel right. It feels good, but it doesn't feel right. Yeah. No, I, I, I can agree with you there. Like, it doesn't feel as satisfying. I think both of what you said, like, yeah, it's it's how, like, the graphics and the animations are. It's, like, it doesn't... There's not that, like, satisfying, like, like I, I want to say pop, or it's that, that satisfying, like, boom that the snipers have in Modern Warfare. This one's more, like, you can tell that these snipers are designed for quick scoping. You know, like, these are, these are quick scoping snipers, basically, right? And it feels like whenever you get a kill with them, it's very easy. Like it's easy to quick scope someone in this game. It's easy to get a long a, a long shot. It's easy to get like a, uh, a, 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 what's it called? A snipe in this game, and by making it easy, it kind of devalues how satisfying getting a kill with a sniper is. I feel like. Yeah, yeah. and I agree because like say with the AX fifty right or any of the snipers, the fastest quick scoping weapon in the game was um, the, the marksman, right? Yeah, the car. Yeah. Yeah. That's the marksman or the car. Yeah, um, but then we eventually we we both moved on to like um, well at least I mainly moved on to the AX, which the decreases the aim down speed significantly. Yeah. No, same here. Yeah. Um, even then, like I was able to, I I'm, I think I'm good enough to say that I'm pretty decent at quick scoping with that gun, and it just it just felt rewarding because it's like okay, I have to time my shots properly, position correctly, and actually hit my flicks or hit my like straight down shots. Mm-hmm. That is rewarding. Right, but when you when you take that aspect out, obviously you know it is just an alpha, and there's only two snipers available, or mm-hmm. however many. Um, but you know it's I don't know. I I just kind of want that. Hopefully they'll add some better snipers and have that feeling back. Yeah. Um, because there's a beta coming out, right? There's gonna be a beta. Yeah, there's a beta coming out this October. Yeah. So. We'll see. We'll see then, or we'll see when the game comes out. But um, that was my my biggest thing. Uh, did you have anything? Like, what was the biggest issue or uh, difference? I think for me, the biggest issue was movement speed. It feels like every single weapon moved allowed you to move with the same or around the same movement speed as each other. I never tested out the LMGs, but I moved just as fast with the snipers as I did with an SMG. I feel like. Maybe there's a slight difference in movement speed, but it doesn't feel like I'm moving faster with a pistol. Or maybe if there was a knife, I you know I would move faster as well. But I kind of like having like those different movement speeds of getting into like a different power position by essentially like sprinting all the way there, you know, with with a pistol and then switching to a different weapon and then you know holding up, holding down the position. Right? I like doing that. But in 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 the alpha, there wasn't really any way to do that. It was just like. There was really no reason to pull out a secondary because you wouldn't be moving faster. You would just pull out a secondary if you ran out of ammo for your primary or if you just needed to like get a quick kill or a quick uh, switch weapon, you know? So my biggest complaint was the movement speed. I feel like it needs to be more varied in, 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 instead of being like one unified movement speed all throughout the weapons. That was my biggest grab with the uh, with the system. My, my other big grab was the score streak system as well. Um... I don't like the fact that it's a little bit easy to either get really close to a chopper gunner or get an actual chopper gunner. Because you don't actually have to get like an 11 kill streak to get that. You can just get like three or four or five kill streaks in a row and you'd get it. You know, that's that's what you would need to do. And that's fine. You know, it, it means I would get my chopper a lot more or maybe a little bit more than I normally would. But at the same time, it kind of it kind of makes it less challenging. It 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 feels more like a uh, I grinded for this chopper rather than a I earned this chopper kind of thing, you know. I, and yeah, uh, I feel like it defeats the purpose of why they implemented it because they wanted to you know add this feature to reduce spamming, right? Mm-hmm. But if it's based on kill streaks and if it increases the speed in which it loads, you know, um, for players like us, eventually we're just gonna get to our groove and in the game, and we're just gonna get know 10 12 uh, multiple kill streaks within that run and at that point we're just going to be able to spam it over and over again right yeah. so it's the kill streaks i definitely don't like um it's 
very redundant. I feel like it was fine to begin with. Yes, some people spam it, but that's just because, you know, they were good. They earned it, right? At least they earned it. Yeah. Um, the only thing that uh, I think they removed is the kill chain, right? So kill streaks don't earn other kill streaks. Mm-hmm. I didn't see that there. So that well, was my only thing with that, right? They don't need that anymore because it's score streaks. You can technically exactly. earn your next kill streak with it with using the same kill streak that you're doing because you're still getting points towards the next one. But okay, so here's speaking of points. Here's here's the one thing I I don't like about this system that or not not, not that I don't like, but I find sort of hypocritical about the system, right? They, the whole point of the score streak system is to encourage players to essentially play the objective a lot more. That's this system's not really doing that. You know, it's not. It's it's not really encouraging you to play the objective. It's it's encouraging you to go on a long kill streak just to get your kill sh- or, or, or or long streak just to get your streaks right. Because when you go play the objective, it doesn't give you any points. It does or it doesn't give you a lot of points. It doesn't give you any multiple multipliers towards your next streak. So it's like if, if that's the case, it's like why would I play the objective then? Why I can't I can just go out and just do my own my own my own thing and just go for kill streaks instead of playing the objective because it doesn't seem like there's any worth going to the actual objective besides wanting to win the game. You know, obviously it's different for like S and D because you know we actually play the objective in S and D. But for something like domination or for something like kill confirm, it's like why would I risk my life to go grab that tag, or why why would I risk my life to go grab B flag if it's not gonna benefit me at all towards my score streak, or it's not gonna give me any other other benefits besides I just want to win this game. You know what I mean? It's it doesn't it it needs to like improve on the reason why I should go for the objective. Other than that, it gives me a, a paltry amount of like fifty points or something. You know, it, it needs to give me more rewards for doing that. I feel like. Yeah, I I totally agree. And before anyone would comments like, "Oh, he doesn't play objective." Oh my god. Um, we we both know me and Etoy are the type of players like, yeah, if we start playing objective, we're most likely gonna win the game, anyways. Yeah. Right. Um, because at least within the modern warfare, we were good enough to the points like, okay, we can just. Lay off objective, just get our kills, just frag out, and have the rest of our team do what they need to do. And obviously, if you know our team are slacking, we'll go in. Mm-hmm. But the the fact of that is like you were saying how the objectives don't give a lot of points, um, and it's completely correct, right? So players are going to be less incentivized to go on the point. They're gonna they're just going to be playing it a little bit more slow and play out their life more and just go around, go flank. And just try and kill or kill over again until they get their score streak. And to me, it's like again, it's it's a bad way of going about it because the main reason why I even got my score streaks on my warfare is because I was playing the objective. I was playing around the objective where players are mostly going to congregate or funnel in. So I'm either going to try and flank that that one corridor where everyone's at, or be in that area to get my kill streak. Right. Yeah. So it's it's completely it's really met. Uh, the, the kill streak system, and um, again, it is early, so I don't know if they're going to do any tweaks to the scoring, to the how you earn your score streaks or anything. But as of right now, it is not good, in my opinion. Not really good. No, it isn't. It it needs it needs a lot of work before getting into the full game. Uh, one of my, my other things is that uh, the most notable thing to me afterwards was. Because I usually play either with a sniper um, and in a secondary, whether it be a shotgun or just a pistol mm-hmm. um, in Modern Warfare. Uh, there, there's multiple instances where I was like, man, I could have gotten that kill if the weapon swap speed was faster. Oh, yeah. Like, oh my god, the, 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 there's too much animation in between, just please just swap instantly. It's it's too much. Like, man, it, you, you can see, you can watch John Wick or watch Keanu Reeves when he's doing practice for for John Wick, he mm-hmm. actually switches weapons way faster than what we're doing in the game. Yeah. I think that's for that's a, that's a problem for shotguns though, right? Like dude, the swap speed between between shotguns and uh a primary weapon is a lot compared to the pistol. Yeah. And that's fine. I feel like cuz if you're switching from a primary to another seemingly primary, yeah. It should be slow. But what if it's a pistol, man? If it's the same almost the same thing as a pistol, it's like, "What? Are you kidding me?" Yeah. It's it's too much mm-hmm. at least for the pistols I, they should definitely change it because um, the point of having a pistol is being able to just swap quickly 
But if it's the same swap time as a shotgun or almost swap time as an SMG, it's it's completely pointless. There's no point of taking it out. Yeah, that's what I liked about Modern Warfare. <clears throat> it's like if, if I missed a snipe, right? Or if, let's say, I sniped someone and up close and I got a hit marker on it, I can just quickly swap to my Desert Eagle and just pop like one or two shots and it would it would work, right? Because the switching time for that would be really, really fast. But if it was you know, Black Ops Cold War, it's like, I still have to go through another animation just to actually pull my pistol. And by that time, the enemy has enough time to actually, you know, shoot me down. That's, so I so I agree with you in that one. Yeah, and like, the main thing too is that they teach us uh, um, whatever the pit is called within Modern Warfare mm-hmm. is that if you run out of ammo, switch weapons because that's the quickest way. Yeah. But good. when you reload and you switch weapons and then they're like the same thing, it's really... It's pointless. Yeah, there's what's it called? That's that. That's like the time old classic uh, Call of Duty advice: switch to your secondary. It's faster than reloading, kind of thing. I feel like that's that's for every game nowadays. Like in Apex, you know, if you if you run out of ammo in your first weapon, just switch to your other weapon, and there you go. Apex is a perfect example too. It's like instant swap or um, switching animations or switching times. It's just like. Mm. I don't know. I'm really annoyed. Maybe they have a reason for doing that. I don't know the reason, but it's there's it's unnecessary animation. They definitely don't need that. Yeah. Are you still gonna get the game? Uh yeah. Uh, if anything, if the multiplayer is gonna suck, I'm gonna get the zombie. Gonna get it for the zombies. So I always say that to myself. You know, if multiplayer sucks. I'm I'm doing it for the zombies. That's my reason. Why. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, like, since I'm not gonna be playing it until at least. December ish, you know, when everyone gets it, anyways. Um, I'm gonna know by that time if the multiplayer is worth getting. Basically, I think I'm most likely gonna get it, but I, I have other games that I wanna finish first before I go into it. Um, oh, yeah. What's it called? Yeah, for me, like, I, I mainly get Call of Duty for the, for the multiplayer. I don't, the campaign is fine. I think it's cool to, to get it as well. But I think the last campaign that I did, before Modern Warfare was probably Modern Warfare 3. Um, I didn't play the Black Ops 2 campaign. I didn't play any of the other campaigns as well. But you can look the campaign up on uh, on YouTube anyways. You can get the full story on YouTube. You don't have to play it. you know. So for me, that's my main reason for getting the Call of Duty games. So Yeah. it's We all got our reasons. And, and if the reason that we're getting it is bad... There's really no point in getting it, right? Mm-hmm. And that's that's the main thing a lot of games nowadays. It's like, if if I don't have a reason to play it, I'm not going to buy it. Yeah. That's why, you know, we're both so excited for Demon Souls, Spider-Man, God of War. There are reasons behind it, and it's because they're good games, and, you know, the yeah. type of game is good. They're good games, or they're the, they're the type of games that we like to play, essentially. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't, you know, help that they're all, like, ps4 exclusives or something like that or you know mainly ps4 which is also great but it's like yeah going like you know to tie this back around is that x the xbox just needs to give more incentives for players to be on their console yeah if they want to succeed if halo was actually like a top tier first person shooter nowadays i would actually consider it but you know it's not really it's not doing too well so that's why I never really be yeah. like, uh, yeah, I really want to play Halo. It's like, nah, it's... There's other games that I'd rather be playing other than Halo. I think for me, like, I kind of answered the question that I asked earlier today was, I think my top three favorite experiences of all time so far when it comes to multiplayer games. Um, weirdly enough, number one would be when I played Fortnite. Uh, I, that game just frustrated me a lot. But, like, I enjoyed just messing around in that game. I enjoyed like how silly and fun that game was, and that's really what like what I enjoy like about multiplayer experiences. It's not, it's I like I enjoy being having a mixture of like serious, like playtime, but I also enjoy having like silly fun, silly fun, you know, like just messing around, like knifing only in Call of Duty, or, you know, going on a shopping cart in Fortnite and just dancing while people are sniping at you, kind of thing. Like that's, that's that's so funny. Like that's that's so fun to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, that that's probably like my favorite one so far. That and like 
Destiny One as well. Uh, Destiny One, like end of uh, like the last expansion, and probably Overwatch was like my my top games that I would say. I think Overwatch is like the best of both worlds for me. Yeah, um, I agree there. I didn't play a lot of Overwatch, but when I was playing it, playing Fortnite and Overwatch, you guys, it was definitely um, one of the most funs, uh, most funs, um, the best experiences I've had with yeah. playing video games. So yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we are about an hour and fifteen minutes from this recording, oh, wow. so I think that'll be that'll be good enough. We've talked about games. We've talked about a lot about you know the Microsoft acquisition, all that good stuff. And we might even hit up a new game after this. Uh, new, as in Black Ops 3, kind of new. But, yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Pause Menu Podcast. And I think it's time to, I guess, get out of this free play or unpause the menu. So I'll see you guys yep. next time. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.